Aren't you glad for Jesus? Yes. You know, before we get, get started, the Lord laid something on my heart to do for Pastor Rick. And I, I don't take it lightly that he called me and asked me, and I'm thankful. Thank you, Pastor Rick, for being It's an honor. You know, us as a body in here, Pastor Rick is over your souls. He's responsible for you, and I know he prays for you. And he's responsible for what gets put out of this pulpit. So, when it's on the flip side, and he's attacked. See, it's the enemy. The enemy would like to attack. He, he, he don't want to just take, he don't want to just make him sick. He wants to kill him, just like anybody else. Don't never mistake what the devil wants to do for you. And all he's doing is just waiting for his chance. Right. But thank God. He can't do it. Who is in us is greater than he yes, is in the right. world. Amen. So I always look for a scripture. And then I stand on that scripture. And the Lord, I believe, instructed me for us to look at a scripture and for us to stand on. And poor Pastor Rick's concerned before we get into the message. Amen. Amen. In Mark 16, verse 15. Jesus was about to ascend back to heaven and he give this charge. And then the King James says, Go ye unto all the world. You're a ye. I'm a ye. Well, that's, that's us. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, that's eat as well. It shall not hurt them. Amen. Amen. So there's a scripture we're going to stand on. That's right. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So us as a body, God said to do this. He said, let's all in agreement. See, we, we, we have the right. We have a covenant right based on what Jesus said right there where it said they shall drink any deadly thing and not hurt them and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And see, when I pray for somebody, before I lay hands or touch anybody, until I'm ready to release my faith, right. I don't touch them. So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to release our faith where Pastor Rick's concerned all at the same time. And it's real simple. It, it's not, you don't have to pray real long, eloquent prayers, and that's fine if you do. But Amen. we have the authority, so based on that and based on this scripture, we're going to say, no, we won't have it that way. That's all together. Right. Everybody, you ready? Yes. No, no we won't have, have it that way. way. Try that one more time. No, no, we won't have it that way. Amen. Amen. Right. Based on what this says right here. That's right. You just release words into the atmosphere that the devil has to back off where Pastor Rick's concerned. Amen. Right. That's as simple as it is, folks. That's as simple as it is in your lives. Yes. Instead of just sitting down and letting the devil run rampant or do this or do that, even I don't care how small it is, don't give him any ability. That's right. It don't matter what it is, it's a hangnail. That's right. Say, so, no, I won't have it that way. Right. Where your family's concerned. Amen. And that is a corporate deal that we've done, and I believe I believe God directed for us to do that. And where Pastor Rick's concerned, we're not going to have it that That's way. Right. That's, That's right. right. We refuse to Amen. have it that way. Amen. And I'll tell you something else. We yeah. do the same things where Amen. our country's concerned. Yes. This is our country, and we're taking it back. That's and whatever right. the enemy is trying to do this country, this country has helped numerous nations and That's people right. and help spread the gospel. This country is not going down the tube right. by any means. Amen. Amen. The Babylonian system has been built up and the, some, of the, some of the castles and the paper you know, that's not real and that kind of thing may be falling and crumbling, but this country you know, is based on, it, it's, it was founded on God's Word. Yes. It was established on God's covenant. Yes. It was established on godly principles. Amen. You know? The word's not going to fail. It's not going to fall. We're based on God's word. It's still in the, in the Constitution. It's still up in the White House. It's still in plaques behind the glass. They may not observe it and and, and bring it out and, and like they should, but it's still there and it's still based on the same foundation. That's right. It hasn't been changed 
God's word hasn't changed. Amen. We're not going down. No. We're not going under. No. The no. church no. is going to be a glorious, victorious yes. church. Yes. For the yep. second coming of Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's right. over and up. People are going to be coming to you before this thing's <laughs> over. I believe, I firmly believe, and they're going to want to know what you are doing because God is going to take care of us. He's going to take care of His church. Yes, He is. And we're going to get this thing wrapped up and, and get on out of here That's and wear right. it up for the Lamb. So, Amen. Sooner than you think. Amen. That's right. Sooner than you think. That's right. So every time today when you think about Pastor Rick, just say, no, no I won't have it that way. That's right. Because you have that authority. That's you right. have that authority. That's right. Amen. 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 Well, I was impressed to... Uh, Share a testimony, and I just believe, I believe, I, I mean, I know they prayed and all of that, and I believe that uh, Pastor Rick is better from yes. this hour on Amen. than he has been. Yes. He's just getting better and better and better and going out from there. Last Wednesday, I'm going to do a testimony right quick because it will build you faith. Amen. Amen. Last Wednesday, I worked construction, and I had a friend of mine, and he was helping me put in some ceiling tile. The ceiling was about 12 foot tall. And uh, he was on the top. We had a, if you know anything about construction, we had a periscalpel, which was about four foot wide and it's about six foot long. And we had two sections stacked because the top rung is six foot. He needed to be standing at seven foot so he could reach the 12 foot ceiling comfortably. So I had two boards. I was, oh, probably waist high and I had that board there, and I stacked it on the tile on it, and I was doing the cuts, and he was up on top because you'd have to cut for sprinkler heads and, and short pieces and borders and different things. And he was putting them in. So we were moving along fine, and it was about 11 o'clock, I think, something like that. <clears throat> and he had been up and down already up the scaffold, and and, uh, and I was right under him. But uh, I told him, I said, you know, I said, well, I'm, I'm out of tile, so we need to go back and get some more tile. We had it stacked in another room, and we had a drinking fountain. You know, it's pretty warm when you're standing up high and we were, you know, working and, and having a good time. We was talking and enjoying it, you know, everything and, uh, you know, enjoying work. And uh, I, I stepped out. By the time he said, yeah, I'm going to come down and get a drink. Well, I turned and stepped out. And when I did, apparently he lost his balance. And he grabbed that scalpel with his hand. And, and there was one of the runs that was a square tube, oh, probably like that. And he grabbed that he grabbed that piece of square tube somehow with one of his hands, and here he come. He fell all the way to the floor, and he hollered real loud about the time. And so I turned around. I just walked out from under it. God protection yes. kept me from being under all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I turned around just in time to watch the splat and the blood and all that stuff. And of course, I didn't say what came to my mind because blood's pumping. Yeah. He hit his head. I mean, it's got a gash in it. His hand, his, where he's holding on that scalpel, that, that whole weight of that scalpel came down and caught him right across there, and it was bad. I mean, there was blood just going, and his head, you know, and I'm sitting there, you know, you first thought I was going, oh my God, you know. But I didn't say, you know, I didn't say well, anything to come to my mind. I just went into action and, and, uh, Ran to get some towels and get water on them and had the ladies next door. They heard it came around. I said, call 911, get me an ambulance. And uh, it, it just didn't look good in the natural, you know. And I prayed a real eloquent prayer, but like it one y'all heard me pray a while ago, I said, God have mercy on him. Don't let him die. Because a head injury could be serious. You know, you don't know if you, you know, coming from falling, standing seven foot, you're another six foot tall or whatever. That's a pretty good fall on your head. Well, I mean, it, it wound the concrete, and it is enough to bust it, the you know the back side of his head. He couldn't tell him your phone, his phone, his own phone number. Remember that part? Yeah, and so I mean, he was he was out of it. I mean, he was just you know, I mean, he wasn't unconscious, but uh, he, you know, it, it, it rattled him, and and he couldn't even you know, I won't call his wife, and, and he couldn't even tell me his phone. He couldn't tell me anything. He said, I just he said I can't feel nothing, and he said, I don't know what happened. I'm just you know, he said I'm out of it. He says I can't think of anything. So I said I understand. So anyway, to make the long story, I just want to tell you that to lead into what his wife said. But anyway, it, it really looked bad. The, the uh, emergency guys came, and you know, of course, they wouldn't paint a very rosy picture either. And they said, I told him, I said, well, I'll get a hold of his wife. And I dug his cell phone out of his pocket and 
scrolled up there in front of his wife, and, and I called her and said, Connie, uh, I'm calling you to tell you that Earl fell off the scaffold and, and they're going to take him to the hospital uh, right down the street. She said, well, I'll meet him at the hospital. I'll meet him at the hospital. I said, okay. So with that all being said, y'all know now where this uh, leads up to. And they care and, and him. Still, Remember they care him. Yeah, that, all this came about. They decided that with a head injury, it was indicator, and they said, you know, with a head injury, like that, we've got a care flight. We're going to have to care flight in Fort Worth because we need to do an MRI right now. We need somebody that's a specialist. They need to look at him, yada, yada, yada. We don't have anybody like that. So anyway, with all that in mind, Connie is a, a you know, she's a believer. And, and she she has a little radio deal that she does. And she has a, uh, you know, she, she does the blogging deal, you know. She's got a ministry and that kind of thing, too. But, uh, and then his kids obviously are, are prayers and stuff. But this is what she wrote. She updated everybody. This is like, let's see, this happened on Wednesday. And this was on Friday. <clears throat> no, this, I'm sorry. This, yeah, I see. Yeah, it was on Friday morning when she finally wrote this. This was Friday morning. This is Connie. She said, I remember shaking as I'm standing in the, in the ambulance waiting for Carefly to arrive. The noise of the engine was loud, so the MTs is having to almost yell to tell me the details as I struggled to keep straight. Earl was lying on the gurney, covered in blood, confused, and still head injury, hand partially amputated. It's bad. And John Peter Smith Hospital is all I remember. She heard that part about hands amputated, John Peter Smith Hospital, and, and, uh, and uh, said head injury. Because of the helicopter noise. Anyway, just a few minutes earlier, I received a phone call from a coworker telling me Earl had fell from the scaffold and that the EMTs were going to take him to the hospital to check him out. And I felt like life was in, his, was in the balance. His life was in the balance. After texting my kids, I climbed out of the ambulance trying to hold it together to get to the hospital. After arriving, my daughters and I went in to see him. He was confused and scared. I remember my oldest daughter started praying in authority and strength. You have something, you want somebody in your life That's right. that knows how to release right. their faith. That's right. That's right. Because God will do what He did. I mean, I, it gets to me because I was there. <laughs> God's good. I'm, good. I'm telling you this because this is what God will do. Anyway, I know the prayer that it helped my dad, but strengthened her sister and it got her through the next several hours. Initially, I had been told that right hand was cut so bad it looked like a partial amputation. The muscles and tendons and bones were affected. He hit the concrete from several feet up. There was surely head trauma and probably ribs at the best, at best, broken ribs at best. I could hear my phone dingling in my purse, notifying me of text messages and phone calls, and I couldn't leave the side. He was scared and confused. And the day wore on, the miracles began, the neck collar came off along with the News that there was no concussion. Praise God. God is so good. How could that be that he hit the concrete with his head? Then the news, no broken ribs. <laughs> and no internal injuries. The orthopedic surgeon came in, unwrapped his mangled, bloody mess of a hand. And proclaimed that the tendons and muscles looked to be in good shape. Thank but he you. wanted to, his boss to look at the hand. His boss specialized in hands. Initially, surgery was given. But it was prob uh, it was probable to see. Now it was a probability that he wanted a second opinion. The hand was wrapped back up. The staples were put in the gashes in his head. And Earl was setting up. No more confusion and happy to be alive. Finally, the hand surgeon came in, decided just to stitch up his hand, put the crushed bone back in place, and hoping that the bone would grow back in time, in line. The cast was put on his hand. We were being prepared for dismissal. This is all the same day. There was one final x-ray to make to make sure the bone was removed, had been removed during the stitching up process, and it showed the bone all in the line. The same bone that we were told initially was totally crushed. Another amazing miracle. This is all in the same day. Hallelujah. It gets to me because I've seen all this mess. Yeah. 
Now, two days later, Earl's sitting up in his chair, and this is home, in his easy chair, occasionally walking up around and trying, uh, trying to manage the pain of his hand and just over the counter medication, it's working well. While reading my, while reading my, while reading my Bible this morning, I had, let's see, while reading, while reading my Bible this morning, I had momentary pain. We don't know when Earl will be able to drive or go back to work, but God reminded me of what happened just two days ago. Every single moment of the day was an absolute miracle. Not only was there a miraculous healing in Earl's body, but our family, our relationships, our prayer. So many I can't name. God reminded me he's got this. That's right. I truly don't know what tomorrow will bring. She goes on and talks about that and thank everybody for praying for her and all that. But I wanted you to know on Friday he called me on the phone. And I said, man, it's good to hear your voice. And he said, well, it's good to be here. <laughs> and he said, all I have is a little tick in my back on Thursday night. He said, everything else is fine. I said, once in a while my hand was throbbing or something like that. But God came through. Yes. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what you're facing. I don't care. It doesn't matter who you are or what you're facing. If you will believe yes. what God said, yeah. if you will stand up and say, I won't have it this way. That's right. We've got the authority. That's right. We've got the boldness to come in before the throne of God and, and obtain mercy. In time of need. That's yeah, right. in That's time right. of need. We can right. go in to the God that creates planets, made us, created everything we see, and obtain mercy. Yep. See, so there's healing mercies. A lot of times we forget about, there's all kinds of, of ways that God has for us to be healed, but there's healing mercies. Remembering uh, the Gospels there, several times there were people that came to Jesus and said, have mercy on us. Yes. And he turned right around and Jesus said, you you know, you be healed or your faith made you whole or whatever. And where they didn't say that, it was implied. That's right. That he said, you know, the, the, the mercy thing. But there's healing mercies. That's right. So when all else fails, you can rely on the healing mercy yes. of God. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But we have that right. That's right. We have that covenant. We have what it takes for somebody I'm talking about in a mess that looks, when all else looks <laughs> terrible, God can take it and turn it around. Now, God didn't have anything to do with an accident because yeah. there's accidents. That's the right. devil tries to set up traps for us. He will, I'm telling you folks that he would yes. love nothing better to take you out. He'd like, number one, he'd like to take you out before you ever give your heart to the Lord. That's right. But if you give your heart to the Lord, if he can take you out and you not affect somebody else exactly. in the process... Yeah, yes. he's, he's all about that. He'd like to get you off of this face of the earth. That's right. Never doubt that. But greater yes. is he that's in you than he yes. that's in the world. Amen. And all you have to do, I mean, just real eloquently stand up and say, no, I won't have it this way in my family. That's or right. no, I won't have it this way in my body. That's right. And there's nothing he can do about it. There's that's nothing right. that he can do about it. See, most, most people believe that God will tell you, but you got to believe it for yourself. Right. I mean, you got to receive it for yourself. Yes. you got to, you got to, you got to get, you know, you can, you can say, God, have mercy on me or have somebody pray for you or whatever the case is, but when it comes down to it, you still have to do something yourself. That's you right. need, you need to believe for yourself, That's for right. you, mm -hmm. that God will do it for you because it, there was nobody else but one of you in this room, or that was as the only one on this planet. Jesus would have still come for you, Amen. and you've got to get that in your head that Jesus will do it for you. Amen. And if He'll do it for Earl, to fell off the scaffold and it looked bleak. And there's a lot of folks that I know of that if they would have fell off that scaffold would probably be preaching a funeral for them. That's right. That's how bad it was. I mean, in the natural. Looking at it. I'm talking about the natural looking at it. But God. But God, yes. That's right. 
In Mark 9, 22, 23, it says, All things are possible to him that believes. Matthew 18, 18 and 19 says, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth. And see, again, you don't have to, you don't have to come up with some, you know, long prayer that somebody, you know, you heard somebody say, that's the way, it's some formula that you do it. Mm -hmm. You can agree with someone, just like we did a while ago from Pastor Rick. That's right. And it's as simple as, no, I won't have it that way. Now, I don't know why I'm emphasizing that, but that's what God gave me to emphasize this morning. Somebody must need to know that, hey, I can stand up in my family, and it's time for me to stand up and say, no, I won't have it that way. I don't know about you, but I've got some family members that I need, you know, I've been doing that for. I've been yeah. standing up for them. I've been saying, no, I don't have it that way. I am not going to let my, my seed go to hell. That's right. And I have that authority. That's right. God's going to send the angels or the Holy Spirit or whatever He has to do to convict, you know, those folks. He don't make you do anything, but let me tell you something. He knows how to get the job done. That's right. When you, a covenant, relation, standing in good standing with God, stands up and say, no, I won't have it that way. The devil has to back off, and you yes. don't you don't have to have some big old long drawn out deal. That's right. It's true. That's good preaching. That's for me. I don't know if it's for anybody it's else or not, but I know it's for me. Me too. Matthew twenty one twenty two says, "Whatsoever, whatsoever, 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 at any time, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive it." I don't know about your Bible. Mine's got red. That's Jesus. You know, and Jesus, I, you know, I learned a long time ago, I believe Keith Moore said that red letters trump everything. It does. <laughs> you know, if you play spades or some card game or something, you got trumps or dominoes or something, and you got a trump. Well, these red letters are the trump that trumps everything else. That's right. And he says, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe me. That's a key. You got to believe it. Yeah, you got to pray it. That's right. And then you got to believe it. That's right. And then the next thing is receive it. That's right. Yes. John 14, 14 says, If you ask anything in my name, anything in my name, anything in my name. Another key is you ask, you got to ask. It don't mean beg or keep on, you know, beating down the door and going back over and over and over and over and over and over. And over. You just ask anything in my name. I will do it. Exactly. Anything. Yep. John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask, and it will be done. That's right. Yes. Verse 16 says, Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. So you pray the way God, the way Jesus said to do it is ask in Jesus' name. I mean, there's several ways to do this. But one of the one of the ways is ask in Jesus' name. The Father will do it for you. Amen. You have the right to walk boldly, mm -hmm. boldly into the throne. Yes. This morning, yes. sitting right here in Bikini, Texas. Amen. You have the authority to walk into the. I mean, you can't go into the president's office without protocol. That's right. But if you're a covenant believer. With the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have the right through Him to walk boldly up to the Father and ask anything in Jesus' name. And Jesus said, He will give it to you. Yeah. I didn't write that. Those red letters. Trump said Jesus said that. That's what Jesus said. Amen. Amen. John 16, 23 says, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, He will give it to you. 1 Corinthians 3.21 says, All things are yours. And of course, Mark 11, 22 through 24. Let's turn over there. I want to read that because I don't want to miss any of that. I like it in the Amplified. Okay. And, and, and don't, don't look at some of these scriptures like, well, I've heard that before. Look at these. See, look at these. Look at scripture. Like you've never read it before every time you go to read a scripture. Mm -hmm. Because I'm satisfied.
that there's so much in this word that we hadn't seen yet. We think, man, we've seen all kinds of revelation and stuff out of Mark 11, 23 and 24 because, you know, Brother Hagin has talked about it, talked about it, preached it, preached it, preached it, preached it so much. But I'm telling you that I'm satisfied that millions of years from now, we'll be looking at God going, oh, wow, man, did you see that? Look at that. That's something different. That's a new facet. I had never seen that before. And the Word is alive. And God is the same as His Word. Him and His Word are one. And every time we look at this Word, we ought to look at it like we've never seen it before and say, God, enlighten this to me and show me what you got for me out of this Word today. Amen. Amen. Because faith don't come by having heard. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Let's read this. This is good. Jesus said, Have faith in God. That's four words that will challenge your life. I don't have time to get into that. But have faith in God. For verily I say to you, whatsoever or whosoever shall say to this mountain, just like Pastor Rick. That's right. Rick. Pastor Rick says, the devil said, I'm going to do this or do that or whatever the case is, but we spoke to the mountain That's of right. sickness yes. by saying, no, we won't have yeah. it that way. That's uh -huh. right. This is something you need to adapt into your life every day. Just like you get up, brush your teeth or whatever you do, comb your hair. You need to adapt it into your life of saying, no, I won't have it that way. That's right. It's very important that you do that. We have a boy that's 24, I guess he's 24 years old this year. When he was born, there was prophecies that was spoke over him that he would, you know, bring us together in a new way and, and he would be a God sin from God and a whole bunch of stuff. And when he was born... The, the doctor said he has a problem. He's got he got this, he's got that. We've got to put him in intensive care and he can't breathe and can't that. And Jeanette and I said, no, you ain't done that. That's right. We won't That's have it. Word from God. Because God has said, it's just like when Paul, when Paul was going to to uh to Rome, you know, when they were sending him on that ship and he was shipwrecked. Uh -huh. See, he had already been told the angel to come and told him that, hey, you're gonna stand before for those guys that burned wrong before Caesar. So he knew he he believed God. And he knew that he wasn't going to drown, number one, when the ship went down. That's right. Then he got on the island and a viper come and attached itself to his hand and he just shook it off because see, he knew he had a word from God and God said, you're going to stand before Caesar, Paul. Yeah. Paul knew he was going. He knew yeah. where he was going. So he said, you can't kill me with that viper. You're not going to drown me. You can't kill me with that Bible because I'm standing before Caesar. That's right. See, when we decide that God said, whosoever, that's us, shall say to this mountain because he set some things in motion. That's right. There's some things. All we got to do is get in on it. All we got to do is get on and line up with what God's word already says. Be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. Now I want to stop here for a second because it's just like looking at Earl that I was telling you about. I was looking at him on the concrete floor and I seen what he looked like. So my head was thinking, you know, goofy thoughts about God be, you know, have mercy on him and don't let him die. You know, because in my head, but I knew in my heart that God would take care of me. See, you can have doubts that's yeah. coming to your head, yeah. yes. but if you got it in your heart, that's right. Because mm -hmm. it don't say believe it with your head. It says don't doubt your heart. It don't say don't doubt your head. It says don't doubt your heart. Because see, the enemy tries to work in your soulish realm, and that's in the yeah. mind realm. So he's throwing darts and thoughts and different things. And that's where you need to take those thoughts captive. Yep. That come to your mind. Mm -hmm. Don't speak. Bring them into captivity and Don't cast them down. It. Cast down those imaginations that yes. have tried to exalt yeah, themselves yeah, yeah. instead of that blood sitting there running all over that concrete floor. Don't let that what you see or what you think rule over what the God's word says. Yeah. But shall believe 
that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say to you, what some things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. That's right. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against anybody, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Yeah. But if you don't forgive, neither will your Father forgive. You know, he didn't go off into another thought here when he was talking about this stuff here. You know, you can't go around with a bunch of something that, you know, hate or something in your heart or some ought against somebody, you know, and expect this thing to work according to Jesus. Nope. You know, you need to let that stuff go. Just let it, let, let it go. go, you know. Just let it go. Give it up. And then when you do that, 23, 24, and 25, or 23 and 24 will work for you. That's right. That's great. I mean, yes. when you know that you know that you know, and you've got it in here, you got it in your heart, you believe it in your heart, and you say it with your mouth, you shall have whatsoever you say. Mm -hmm. The Amplified says, and Jesus replied to them, saying, Have faith in God constantly. Yeah. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those, what he says will take place, it will be done for him. For this reason I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, you will get it. Oh, man. That's which version? That's the Amplified. Read that in Amplified. I'm telling you, I, I, wouldn't, I don't know what I'd do without a parallel version. I, I, I've got to have the Amplified because to me the Amplified brings it out to where I understand it. Amen. Good. Don't ever forget that whatever's been provided by grace has got to be received by faith. Now I always use this analogy so I, I mean it's work so I'll use it again. If I come in and give you a gift certificate over here to salt grass I give you the gift certificate. Does that mean you're going to always get the steak, or you're going to get what I get, you know, whatever that amount is? I mean, if I just give you the gift certificate and you got it, you go around. I got a gift certificate. I got a gift certificate. Are you going to get full? No. Are you going to satisfy your hunger? No. You got the grace of somebody giving you the certificate, but you got to get in a car, get somebody to take you, or whatever. And you got to drive over to the salt grass, and you got to take that cash or that ticket, just like cash, and redeem it, and say, "Hey, I want that steak, or I want that chicken, or whatever you're eating." Amen. I want that. See, that's Jesus. I know that's a that's a simple analogy, but it's something I understand, so I can tell you. And and and, and Jesus gave us everything we've been reading about this morning. Mm -hmm. He's already provided it. He's already done the deal. It's a sealed deal. Nobody can change it. Nobody can mess it up. Right. An Adam and an Eve can't step up and mess something up that Jesus has did. Right. So, for you to use it, utilize it in your life, you have to obtain it by faith because it's already been provided by grace. That's Jesus right. has already done the hard part. He's already got it for us. He's already worked. He, nothing else you got to do. You don't have to slave for it. You don't have to, you know, struggle. You just got to receive it by faith. Amen. If you're waiting on it, I wrote this down in my Bible sometime, but it's just good to say it again. I know you, you'll, you'll like it. If you're waiting on it, that means you're not believing you receive it until you see it. You must believe it before you receive it, just as receiving salvation. Folks are not waiting on God for the provision of salvation. Salvation's already been provided. Right. And reality of redemption was paid for all at the same time. Everything we've been talking about this morning, he paid for the whole kit and caboodle. Amen. At one time. Receiving redemption works for the same in all of the areas you've been redeemed from, and that's by faith. You have to obtain it by faith. And lastly, 1 Timothy 6.12 says, Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. The good fight of faith is saying with your mouth, taking it to your, you know,
taking it and believing it yourself. That's that's the only fight we have. That's the only that's the only thing you got to do. You got to receive it. That's all you have to do is you have to receive it. Right. You have to receive it. Because nobody can receive it for you. Mm -hmm. People can pray for you till the hair falls plum off your head, yeah. but if you don't receive it, it's just going through motions. You got to receive it. You got to. You got to make it applicable to your situation for you. Yeah. And when something, I mean, look, it doesn't matter in reality if somebody does die or whatever the case is, we have the authority mm -hmm. to overcome, to, you know, I believe God instructed me to raise somebody from the dead. I do it. True. I believe I do it. Yeah. There's been some things said. There's been some things prophesied. I haven't seen come to pass yet, but I believe it's coming. Yeah. I believe we're about to experience some things as the body of Christ and the church that's going to be back to the Ananias and Sapphira days when people had a real reverential fear for the church because, you know, the, because of the news media and stuff that's been out there and people that's, that's slammed the church, things that went on in reality in the church, people, you know, Make light of it and all kinds of things. You know they don't they don't have any reverential fear of God. But I'm telling you, folks, if we will stand up and we'll start exercising our rights and we'll start exercising our authority, just like we did this morning, yeah. and what we've been talking about this morning, it will change and it will change the way that the people see you in the world. Because you live in whatever your life is. There's people watching you. In your, in your sphere of influence, wherever you're at, yeah. people are watching you. I've had numerous people over and over and over in my in construction before. I'd work a job or something and I'd never said nothing about coming to Jesus or whatever unless the opportunity presents itself and then I talk to people, you know. But I've had countless number of people that, you know, I wouldn't think they know God from a goat and may not have. But come to me and say, you know, there's something different about you, and and uh, I, I respect that. You know, yeah. I, I respect when you, you know, the way you handle it, the way you handle this or that situation, whatever. You know, there's all kind of thing that goes on, but they they see that, and I know it happens in your life, wherever you're at, on the job, maybe in your family, uh, whatever the case is. But there's an old song that I think has a lot of. A lot of truth in it where it says you've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's time that we stand up Amen. and tell the devil enough is enough. Is enough. Mm -hmm. That may be short and sweet, but that's, right. that's what God gave me. And I, know, I learned a long time ago, I say what I'm told to say, and that's it. That's We're right. done, and everybody else likes it a lot better. <laughs>